The Assembly will hear an address by His Excellency Chandri Kape Sad Santoki, President of the Republic of Suriname. I request protocol to escort His Excellency and invite him to address the Assembly. Madam President, Excellencies, as of delegations, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Madam President, this General Assembly is of historic significance as we embark on a process of recalibrating international relations and establishing a more effective multilateral framework. I therefore extend my heartfelt congratulations to the President on his election to preside over this esteemed body and allow me to congratulate the outgoing Chair of Trinidad and Tobago on a job well done under difficult circumstances. Madam President, this organization was founded after two devastating world wars. Its original purpose remains relevant today to save current and future generations from the disastrous consequences of wars and armed conflicts and foster peace and political stability for sustained prosperity for all. We, however, observe instead that the world is marked by a complex political and security crisis weakening our global multilateral framework of collective solidarity, international law, and respect, of, respect for humanitarian law. The conflicts that divide us are not isolated incidents. They are symptoms of deeper systemic challenges, rising inequality, environmental degradation, and breakdown of global trust. The time has come to dare to make bold decisions, revisit our global governance architecture, and to recommit to the original goals of the United Nations. Madam President, with statistics showing that countries are off track on the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, while projections estimate that almost 600 million people will continue to live in extreme poverty in 2030. That is incumbent on us to close the gap between aspiration and financing. I wish to emphasize the urgent need for accelerated reforms and coordination within the international financial architecture, especially the international financial institutions. The Multidimensional Vulnerability Index MFI offers a comprehensive and inclusive framework that goes beyond traditional metrics to capture the true complexity of the vulnerabilities of small islands developing and low-lying coastal states. We urge that the MFI is embedded in the operations of the international financial institutions, especially the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank. Apart from the MVI, we see other financial obstacles in place that have a major negative impact on our ability to generate development, especially de-risking measures of international banks which are based on general assessments, do not consider the country's reality and the severe impact on development objectives of the country. This must be addressed head on if we want to be inclusive rather than exclusive. My country, Suriname, can attest to the importance of urgent need to reform the global financial and political system and to build greater trust in the multilateral system. Because of our ranking, we are not eligible for several global financial instruments to the detriment of my people. Since taking office in July 2020, 
my government has successfully started a policy of financial economic reforms, including restructuring the debt portfolio supported by an IMF program and international financial institutions. The impact of the various crises and national efforts to reform the economy has not been easy for the population. But we are on the road to recovery now. Macroeconomic stability has been achieved. We established a social safety net and increased several social benefits, all meant to make sure that we did not forget or exclude that part of our population from restoring a healthier economy. Madam President, 2024 statistics reveal that progress in the area of climate action is inadequate with global greenhouse gas emissions still rising. Despite the need for reductions, climate action can no longer be postponed nor ignored. Soon, we'll meet in Azerbaijan for COP29. Madam President, will we be repeating ourselves with empty promises and pledges, or will we take decisive action to save this planet from extinction? Madam President, Suriname is committed to the Paris Agreement. Suriname has also submitted ambitious nationally determined contributions and has recently started the process of carbon credit trading. Suriname aims to remain a carbon negative country with a high level of biodiversity and more than 90% forest coverage. With this conscious choice to limit deforestation we sacrifice economic development for our people. For this, Madam President, we are not compensated while everyone benefits from our decision. Carbon negative and carbon neutral countries must be supported for maintaining that status. We are in favor of a just transition to a carbonless economy for the coming decades, but we also expect to be allowed to develop our natural resources in an environmentally friendly and balanced manner in compliance with the international standards and practices. In fact, we have already embarked on in such a development path by introducing more renewables to our energy grid, utilizing technological innovations to reduce our carbon footprint even further. Madam President, Suriname has had, over the past 100 years, industrial development of bauxite industry, onshore oil production, gold production, as well as agriculture production and other industries. And despite these activities, Suriname is among the three carbon negative countries in the world. At the same time, Suriname is among the seven most vulnerable countries with respect to the effects of rising sea levels. Madam President, not only have the international pledges for climate financing not materialized in the way pledged, but access to the available resources is an enormous challenge. Simplification of the application and appraisal procedures must be put in place to have the required impact at local level. Regretfully, we also observe that a large part of these funds funds their way in time-consuming and expensive studies, consultancies, and advisory services. In the meantime, the situation on the ground in the affected regions and countries is deteriorating. Often, the requested assistance comes too late. Madam President, to transform the well-being of our communities, we must embrace diversity and work towards social justice and inclusion. That is what responsible leaders do, making sure no one is left out or excluded. We must practice what we preach, Madam President. While the humanitarian and security situation in the Republic of Haiti remains of concern, we are pleased to note also through leadership of the Caribbean 
community, a roadmap towards free and fair elections has been initiated and a transition government with a clear mandate has been installed. We cannot leave Haiti and its people alone and behind. Haiti fatigue is not an option. We urge the international community to financially and technically support Haiti on its path forward. Suriname will contribute to the MSS with security personnel and remains committed to assist in whatever, in whatever way we can. We urge and call for a more effective, coordinated, and coherent approach and the transparent sharing of information regarding the different initiatives to serve more effectively the objectives of facilitating peace, security, and prosperity in Haiti and the Haitian people. Madam President, leaving no one behind should also include lifting the long-standing economic embargo against Cuba and its people. Adopting the Pact of the Future represents an opportunity to redirect a new path for humanity to address current challenges while laying the groundwork for sustainable solutions. We need to foster collaboration and strengthen partnership to address the long-term global issues as climate change, social inequality, and access to affordable health care and quality education for all. Small nations need the support for digital transformation, providing the tools and capacity building initiatives needed to fully integrate into the global digital economy. We must, Madam President, utilize technology in a positive and constructive manner to facilitate financial inclusion for all. Access to general education and skill training, but also telemedicine and treatment, as well as instant government services. Madam President, 2024 marks the fifth time for me to address the General Assembly. In 2020, I made my maiden address virtually through the optimal use of modern technology. At that time, I remarked that multilateralism came under attack on several occasions. And four years onwards, we still have a long way to go. We must work collectively and with a sense of urgency and positive attitudes towards a renewed commitment to a multilateral framework that is more inclusive, more equitable, more accountable, with the ultimate goal to create a better, safer, and more productive planet for our people now and in the future. In conclusion, Madam President, the theme, Leave No One Behind, is a call to action, but also a challenge. For smaller countries like Suriname, the global system often continues exclusion, sometimes a new version and new style. As we continue our renewed commitment to building a more just, inclusive, and equitable international system where accountability is important, and together, Mr. Ms. Madam President, we must ensure we must ensure that no nation, no community, no individual, no women, and no children is excluded or left behind from the promise of peace, prosperity, and dignity. Let's live up to the spirit of one for all and all for one. I thank you, and may God bless you all. On behalf of the Assembly, I wish to thank the President of the Republic of Suriname.